YouTube land. This is Brenton Sawin coming to you from Lexington, Kentucky, the Bluegrass State. I had a subscriber send a very cool story here recently. He goes by, by uh, Verbal D, and um, he sent his story in two parts on a recording. And um, he was, I think, wanting me to animate the story and all that kind of stuff. And um, I had it sitting here, had it sitting here, and had it sitting here. And uh, I've never gotten around to making the art for it. And it's a really, really good story. He did such a good job telling the story. I thought I would post the story with some of the art I already have. Because I think the story is really a good enough to, if you just listen to it, you visualize the story anyway. And I, I can put up some of my art from the, you know, various other shows and things that I've been doing. And uh, give you something to kind of look at. But when you listen to the story, you'll picture in your head what you would put to the story anyway. And um, whenever I listened to it, I had I wasn't looking at anything, and the story was just awesome, very very good story. And he even gives a good critique at the very end of the whole scenario. And uh, and he also sent a song of him rapping. Um, he's an inspiring musician, but the dude is very well spoken. Um, a good storyteller and a good musician so at the very end I believe I will put the song so listen to the song also if you would and um, and this is art from just previous videos just something to put on the screen as he tells his story so this doesn't necessarily go with the story and uh, Anyway, let me know what you think, man. This is a, a really cool story, I think. So, enjoy. Okay, so this is the story that happened to me a few years ago. And my name is Dominic James, and I lived in San Francisco at the time. And during this time, I was going to university, and I lived with my best friend, Leon. And... One day we went out at nighttime. We were just um, going to go see a movie and we love to watch scary movies. And um, I know that God says, you know, be careful of what you put before your eyes. And, you know, a lot of these movies, they might open up portals or, or whatever your beliefs may be. But anyways, we went to go see the movie, which is called The Devil. And this movie basically is about a uh, quick synopsis is basically people get stuck in an elevator in a work building and there's like six or seven people of all different races and, and shapes and sizes. And every time the light goes out, they get possessed and then one ends up killing somebody while the lights are out. And when the lights come back on, they're all accusing each other at the very end of the movie. Only one person survives because he wasn't able to be possessed because he finally asked for forgiveness from God. And all six or seven individuals that were in that elevator shaft, they had done something very sinful or very, in the devil's eyes, very unforgiving. And they needed to be punished. And none of them repented. So he was able to possess them and, and control them. Now, so we watched this movie, and the movie ended. The guy said, okay, I, I finally repent. Uh, please forgive me. I was a drunk driver. I killed a mother and her daughter, and I just can't take the guilt anymore. Please forgive me. And then eventually the firefighters and the police officers opened up the elevator shaft. He was the only one to survive, and they concluded that he couldn't have possibly done some of the heinous murders that happened in the elevator shaft just because of his strength and the craziness of the murders. There was no way because he didn't have any weapons. So the movie ended. Me and Leon, we go out of the movie theater 
and he's just in disbelief. He doesn't like the movie. He's like, that movie's so stupid. It's really stupid. I really don't understand how you can be possessed by the devil. I'm a child of God. I'm strong. I'm, I wish the devil would try to possess me. He can't touch me. I'm too strong. And I'm looking at Leon like, bro, don't say that. We over here walking to the car in the middle of the parking lot. And he's speaking it into the atmosphere. I wish the devil would try to possess me. I'm a child of God. Really prideful. And I didn't really like that the way he, he, he stated it, you know. So I just said, you know, be careful of what you, you say because it might come into fruition. Especially thinking about how we're made in God's image and God, he spoke things into existence. And if we have power by his grace and authority... We can also, you know, affect our own world by speaking things into existence, whether it's good or bad, negative, positive. So we get in the car and I'm driving and he says, yo, let's go pick up some weed. And at the time I used to smoke and I don't smoke anymore. But just for the sake of the story, I'm just giving you all the details of what's going on. So we go in the car. I'm driving over to his homie's house, who is a dealer. We pull up to the driveway, and I park in the driveway, and everything is a slope because it's San Francisco. So all the roads that we drive up to this guy's place is a steep hill, and I got a stick shift little bucket, little Toyota. So we pull up to the driveway, and I get out of the car. He gets out of the car, and then we go up to the door, and... Come to find out it's the side back door of the the house and we have to go through the garage and then we get to the gate and he lets us in, this guy. I don't know his name. Uh, I've only met him one time. Anyways, we walk into his house and he greets us. Hey, how you guys doing? Doing good. We're just here to come pick up some weed. So, okay, come into my, come into my house. You can guys sit in the kitchen. So when you walk into the house from the garage... Immediately to your right, there is a couch, and across from that couch is the TV. So it's a living room setting, which is open, connected to the kitchen with the table and chair and the kitchen sink and everything. But who's sitting on the couch? I've never seen this woman before in my life. She's a big, heavy, white woman, and she doesn't acknowledge us as I come into the house and I say hi to her. I give her eye contact and I say hello. She doesn't say anything, and she kept staring at the TV. I thought that was very strange. She gave me a really weird vibe. Leon doesn't say anything. He goes and sits down, and he starts talking to the dealer, and the dealer's pulling out all these different jars of different types of weed, and they're just talking business. And we have leftover Burger King food that we had purchased, and so I just started to eat my burger at the kitchen table, And Leon is testing out different, he's smelling the different types of weed and they're pulling out the bong because they want to try something. And the whole time that we're in this house and I'm sitting down at the kitchen table next to Leon, I can feel this woman, she's staring at us, but with her peripheral vision. Like you can tell when somebody's looking at you, but they're not directly looking at you, but they're paying attention to everything that's going on in the room. But they don't acknowledge you. And that's what she was giving me, this really, really strange energy. And I didn't know where it was coming from. So I nudged Leon to the arm and I said, yo, bro, let's pick up the pace. Let's, you know, let's get out of the house soon. Let's just leave. He's like, oh, OK, I feel you. And I said, yeah, I don't, you know, I don't really feel comfortable. Kind of said it under my breath. He says, OK, so they pull out a certain amount that he wants to purchase. And then he hits the bong. And he starts coughing. And at this point in time, I see the lady look over at us to look at Leon coughing. And I said, okay, this is the perfect time for me to make eye contact with her and establish a connection. So I look at her direction. And as soon as my head starts turning her direction, she turns her head back to the TV as if she didn't look over. I just leave it at that. I don't even want to think about it. Um... Just people can make you really uncomfortable if they're giving off a really strange negative energy. So uh, Leon passes me the um, 
the bong, I take a hit, and then we go out, we say goodbye, we walk past the lady, and then we go into the car. I'm finally glad to be out of the house. I get into the driver's seat. He sits down to the right side of me. It's probably maybe like, say, 2, 10 in the morning. And we're kind of tired. Um, so he's waiting for me to turn the car on. I put the car keys into the ignition. And I'm putting down the, the clutch. And I want to start the car. But then all of a sudden I can't move. Something is in the car. And I just have my hand stuck on the steering wheel. And I feel this presence come into the car. And it's really heavy on me. I can feel the weight on my legs, on my feet, on my thighs, on my chest, on my shoulders. And I can't even move my head. I'm just like paralyzed. And I'm looking straight. And I can only move my eyeballs. Left or right, left or right. And Leon, he says... Yo, what are you doing? Are you high? What's going on? I said, no, I feel fine. I, I just, I can't move. I can't move my, my body. I can't move anything. And what Leon had explained to me later on that day, he said the way I was speaking wasn't how I thought I sounded. This is how I sounded apparently to Leon. Yo, bro, I can't move. I'm... I can't move anything in my body, bro. So I guess I was, apparently I was talking in a, in a monotonous tone. And he was just looking at me like I'm crazy. He said, come on, let's go. I'm trying to get home. I'm trying to go to sleep. We're roommates and we lived at the same place. So I said, bro, I don't know what's going on. And then out of nowhere, water just starts streaming out of my eyes and I said bro look at my eyes right now look at my eyes my eyes I'm I'm crying but there's no emotion behind it I shouldn't be crying right now there's there's water coming out of my eyes look at my eyes and he looks at my eyes and he goes oh snaps what is that why are you crying so much I said bro I don't know it's just coming out of my eyes and at that point whatever was in the car it released me and I just shook it off and I didn't want to talk or think about it too much but I said yo this is really strange bro and I put the car key in the ignition I turned the car on put the clutch down reversed out of the driveway go down the hill and I get to the stop sign stop at the stop sign I go ahead and continue and then I get at a stoplight and I stop at the stoplight because it's red two cars come up behind us and park behind us and they're just waiting for the light like we are and then out of nowhere it comes on to me again, this presence on my body, and I can't move. Now the light turns green, and I got two cars honking at me. Go, go, what are you doing? Get out of the way. Move your car. And I can't move. Leon said, let's go, let's go. I said, bro, I'm, I'm paralyzed. I can't, I can't move. It finally releases me again, and on the way back to the apartment, it happens two more times. So we finally get to the apartment, I park the car, we get out of the car, we go up to the apartment building, we go through the elevator, we go up to the fourth floor, get out of the elevator, walk down the hallway, get our keys out, I open up the front door, and when you get into our apartment, it's just a straight long hallway, and we got four roommates. They all have their own room, and we have... Me and Leon have our own room in the very back. It's the biggest room. We have our own bathroom, our own closet, and it's like a master bedroom. So we walk all the way down the hallway in complete darkness. Everybody's sleeping. So we're tipping toeing all the way back inside our room. And as I'm closing the door, our door is the kind of, kind of door that um, you have to give it a little shoulder nudge because the friction between the door frame and the door don't exactly clothes butter smooth there's a lot of um, extra wood that rubs against each other so I give it a shoulder nudge and it it locks it clicks into place and so many things are running into my head and Leon's tired so he goes and lay down on his bed and I lay down on my bed and my bed is facing directly across parallel to the door we just came into the entrance to our room he's already falling asleep on his back and I'm laying on my side, staring at the, the entrance door to our room. 
And as I'm staring, just thinking to myself, the door starts to open so smoothly, like somebody just sprayed it with WD-40 and they, they shaved all the wood away to where there was no friction at all. And I'm looking at the door and it's opening 10%, 15%, 20%. I get up off my bed and I run and I slam the door shut. Leon's still sleeping. I run over to him. Yo, bro, wake up, wake up. He said, what? What do you want? I'm tired. Man, let me sleep. I said, bro, something's in this room. It came back and it followed us to the house. He said, what are you talking about? I said, something's here. I don't know what it is, but it's trying to, to come get us. Like, we need to we need to do something. He's like, bro, you're tripping. You're hella high. I said, bro, I didn't even smoke that much. I had one hit. He said, yeah, but you're just tired, bro. Let's go to sleep. I said, bro, do you hear that? And he just opens his eyes a little bit and his ears perk up and I hear it. And there's this breathing that's in the room now. It's very, very subtle, but it's very clear at the same time. And it sounds like this. It was like the scariest breathing I've ever heard. It's like straight from Hollywood movie type breathing. And it just spooked me. Like, really, I just didn't know how to handle it. And I said, bro, do you hear that? What is that? What is that? There's something breathing in this room. And I start walking around the room, and he's still on the bed sitting up thinking too much. He's just in disbelief. And I go up to the wall. And Leon has this Albert Einstein poster on the wall with all these Albert Einstein quotes. And I take the poster down and I put my ear right up against the wall. And the wall is adjacent to our roommate next door. But he snores really loudly when he he sleeps. And Leon makes this suggestion, oh, that's just our roommate. I said, no, it's not, bro. Come come over here. Put your ear right next to this wall. He said, nah, I'm not going to do that, bro. You're tripping. I said, but bro, you hear it too. It's right here. I'm putting my ear right next to the wall and I can hear the breathing coming literally at me in my direction from the wall he said no that's the that's the air conditioning the air conditioning no no that's the wind that's the wind underneath the door that's the that's the refrigerator the mini fridge in our room i said no it's not that's the window from the bathroom it's got to be something bro it's not that i said bro i'll wait right here you check everything in the room and you tell me that it's all those things you just mentioned there's there's not one of those reasons are the right one. This is what is happening. I was getting kind of frustrated because he's not believing me, but he hears the sound. So he stands up. He checks the closet, checks the doors, checks the bathroom, checks the refrigerator. And he finally comes back to the wall. And he says, oh, man, what is this? I said, I don't know, bro. I'm really scared. Like, I don't know what to do. And so... As he's pacing the room, I go into the closet and I turn the light on and I start looking in the mirror. And my eyes are pretty red, more red than usual because I had smoked weed a couple of times before in my life where I maybe smoked too much and I never had eyes as red as I did. It was like my eyes were as red as like almost watered down red kool-aid like when it's really dark red and you just add a little bit of water to it it was pretty pretty red and I, di I didn't understand why it was so red and when i looked at the mirror and i was staring at myself and in, in my pupils i felt like i was empty inside like you know the eyes of the window to the soul but I, I felt like i didn't i couldn't connect with myself when i looked in the mirror i felt like i was looking at something else or maybe something was trying to make me see something else so i snap out of it and i get out of the closet and i talked to leon said bro we need to do something and then I start to sit on his bed where he's sitting because he's still thinking and out of nowhere this presence comes close to us and it starts to push us downward. So we have pressure both on my chest and he has pressure on his chest. And the breathing goes from the right side of the wall to the left side of the window and that's a four level drop. There's nothing on that le left side of the, the building. It's coming from the windows now, this loud breathing. And then it moves from the left side of the building 
to right between me and Leon's ears as if its head is right between our ears, like maybe inches away from my ears and the breathing is the loudest it's ever been. And at that point, I just grabbed Leon's hand. I said, bro, we need to start praying. And when I said that, we were pushed down all the way onto the bed. So now my head and my back is on the bed. Leon's head and back is on the bed. I'm holding his hand. I said, bro, we need to pray. He pulls out with his right hand his phone. And I was kind of just thinking, what are we going to pray? Let's go. Let's pray. And then he starts calling his friend who is a child of God and he's always preaching and he, he's just always in the word and he calls him up and he says, yo, I got this, this demon, this entity, this evil spirit in the room, bro. You need to start praying for us and, and rebuking this thing. So he had him on speakerphone and the friend just started to say prayers in, in Jesus Christ's name. You're not welcome here. We rebuke you. You are not going to allow any harm to come to this children's of God and God is going to surround them and angels are going to protect them. And you just need to get out of there. You're not welcome. You need to leave now. And at that point in time, we felt this presence starting to uh, lift up off of us during that time. And it's probably around almost three in the morning now. And out of nowhere, our friend Marcus just walks into our room. He doesn't live with us. We don't know that he was coming over to the house. We don't know how he got into the apartment. But he walks into our room. And we're now sitting up and we're saying goodbye to the friend saying thank you. And Marcus goes, yo, what's that breathing noise? And mind you, Marcus, he didn't smoke. He's new to the situation. He just walked in just after 3 o'clock. And he asked us, what is that that noise, that breathing noise. I said, bro, it's coming from the wall. I was trying to explain it to him. He says, oh, I think it's the refrigerator. And he goes over and he unplugs the refrigerator. And then the breathing noise stops. But that was really strange because me and Leon look at each other. And we know that it wasn't the refrigerator because it just traveled across the whole room. And it was affecting us physically. So we asked Mark, Marcus, how did you get into the room? And he says, oh, the door was unlocked. And I thought that was kind of strange. I didn't know how to take that. I said, oh, okay. So nobody let you into the apartment? You just came over? You didn't even know we were going to be awake? He said, yeah, but you got to stay awake late. So anyways, we stay up the rest of the night. We don't really talk too much about it. Um, we're tired. We finally went back to bed. Marcus ends up crashing with us. And then that morning, we wake up. Marcus is already gone. Guess he had school. I got school. Leon has to go to school. But he has classes a little bit later than me. So I get up, grab my backpack, brush my teeth, wash my face. And I'm heading out the house. And I say, yo, bro, be, be safe. And uh, I'll see you back at the house later on. He says, okay, for sure. I'm about to take a shower. I said, okay, cool. Peace. I grab my longboard. And I go down, elevator, outside, and I'm already cruising over to the university. I get a phone call halfway to the university. I'm only like maybe seven blocks away from the, the university. Leon calls me, yo, bro, you got to come back to the house. You got to come back to the house. And I said, what happened? This is crazy, bro. I just got out of the shower and I opened the door. And as soon as I opened the door to the bathroom to our room, a heat wave just hit me hella hard like 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 as if you had the oven on and you just opened the oven door when it was at its highest temperature a heat wave hit me and just kind of threw me back a little bit and then the two beds that are on top of the rug the carpet rug they moved towards me bro they moved towards me slid towards me like five inches bro and the carpet in between those two beds is scrunched up. I got proof. And I'm still in my towel. I'm still wet, bro. I didn't even have a chance to dry off. I said, bro, I'll be right back. I'll be over there. Hold up. He said, all right, get over here as fast as you can. I get back to the apartment. And I check it out. He's still in the bathroom, scared as heck, 
shaking. So I moved the beds back to their original position. I straightened out the carpet rug and I said, bro, let's do a little prayer. We do a prayer. And I said, yo, be safe because I really got to go to school. He says, okay, for sure. Appreciate you coming over. And I said, yes, yeah, it's, it's good. And then um, I said, bye again. And I head to class. Now, later on that day, he goes to school and then I see him at nighttime. And this is the second day, mind you, from this whole incident that had happened from us watching the movies to us going to the guy's house to buy weed and then coming back to the apartment. So when he comes back from school, he says, yo, bro, when I was going to school, I took the elevator and I heard the strangest thing in the elevator, bro. I don't know if it was the security guard messing with me or, you know, he was like saying something over the, the overhead speakers, but... I was in the elevator and I was heading down from the fourth floor to the first floor and I heard like this like this monster voice. It was really deep, bassy, and it had like really strange language to it. It kind of sounded like <laughs> I, was, I didn't understand it. It just sounded really strange. I just thought it was the security guard messing with me. When he told me that, I didn't think of anything of it. I said, yeah, maybe he was messing with you or I'm not sure what to think of that but we don't have anything that happens at the house at any time of that time so maybe a couple of weeks go by and then um, Leon has some issues with one of our roommates because he keeps smoking in the apartment and he had signed a lease agreement where he's not supposed to smoke inside the apartment so Leon ends up just cutting ties and he moves out and I'm in that room by myself. So I need somebody to help me pay the rent. So I have Marcus come and live with me temporarily. And I also have my auntie come and live with me so they can offset the cost of the rent for the room. So they come over and they move in and they offset the cost of the rent and it makes it easier on me. And I had actually during that time gotten Leon a job at the hotel that I worked at. And I was just kicking it at the house, at the apartment, and he's at the new job working graveyard shift. And Marcus came over to visit with him, and they're just chilling behind the desk. So while they're chilling behind the desk, Marcus has his phone next to Leon's phone, and they're probably watching YouTube or something. It's a really laid back job, it's just a front desk clerk job. And apparently, they get a phone call to Leon's phone, and Leon looks at his phone. And he says, yo, Marcus, you're calling me, bro. Marcus looks at Leon and says, no, I'm not calling you, bro. My phone's right here. Look at it. And they look at the phone. And the phone is not calling anybody, but they're getting the phone number for Marcus's phone calling Leon's phone. So they answer it. Leon hands it to Marcus. He says, yo, answer it. So Marcus answers Leon's phone. He says, hello? And there's a voice that goes, Hello? Marcus goes, who, who is this? The voice goes, Marcus. Marcus says, no, I'm Marcus. The voice goes, no, I'm Marcus. Marcus says, yo, stop playing on the phone. What do you want? The voice goes, I want Leon. Leon said, what you want with me, cuz? Who sent you? Who sent you? The voice says, I want Leon, and I want Leon's girlfriend. The voice even says Leon's girlfriend. I'm not going to say her name. I'll just call her Melissa. I want Melissa. And then he says her full name. And me and Marcus know that Leon's very private about his life, and he doesn't like to give anybody any personal information about his life. And his girlfriend stays home a lot and she just goes to work. She stays at home. She doesn't really socialize that much and she's fairly new to the city anyway. So the fact that this voice even knew her full name was really trippy to at the time. And he says, yo, what do you want with her? You got to deal with me. What do you want? Stop playing on the phone. And then the voice says, I can see you both. I know you're at the hotel. I can see you and Marcus goes, no, we're not here. No, I'm not. I'm not at the hotel. And the voice says, you're a liar. I can see you. I know what I know what color shirt you're wearing. 
And it even tells Marcus what color shirt he's wearing at that moment. And at the time, Marcus and, and Leon look at each other like, yo, somebody hacked into the video cameras and they hacked into the phone. What's going on? You got like some guy messing with us using technology. At that same time, they're trying to figure out what's going on. So they think maybe it's Dominic. Maybe it's Verbal. They call me Verbal because Verbal D is my, my musician name. And Leon's a musician. So they start to call my phone with Marcus's phone. I'm at the house just chilling with a friend. And they call me up and I answer the phone. And it's my, I don't know, it's like maybe 3.30, 4 in the morning. And I go, hello? They had say, yo, Verbal. Yo, Verbal. And I say, yo, I'm right here. And as soon as I say hello, I hear this voice. And it goes, hello, Dominic. Who's the, who's that guy just saying my name? And said, that's what we're trying to tell you. What are you doing right now? And I said, oh, I'm just uh, chilling at the house, kicking it with my friend. No, but what are you doing? I saw we're just uh, watching the movie, just kicking it. So, so you didn't call my phone right now? I said, no, I didn't call your phone. You're not playing with my phone right now? I said, no, I'm not playing with your phone. He said, bro, there's somebody on the phone right now. And I said, who is it? He said, I don't know. They, but they're playing with us. And then Marcus asked the voice, how old are you? And the voice says, I am a thousand years old. And at that point, I just, I thought that was like the weirdest answer anybody could give. Because if anybody's doing a prank call, usually they would say something along the lines of like, oh, I'm 99 or I'm 13 or I'm 7 or I'm, I'm 42. But to say you're a thousand years old, it was very out of the blue, I guess, for me. So I started explaining to my friend at, at the at the apartment what's going on. I said, yo, there's something that happened to me and Leon just a couple weeks ago. And it's, it, it's, it's, I think it's still happening. It's, it's following them around and he's at the job and this is going down. And um, I said, yo, I'll call you. I'll call you back, bro. And Leon and Marcus said, all right, for sure, bro. We'll, we'll try to figure this out. And so I hang up. But as soon as I hang up, like I'm getting like super emotional. I'm, I'm all in my feelings and. I'm getting scared again, just like thinking about what happened to us in the room when we lived together and just the fear that these entities can instill in you. And I know that I'm giving them power now that I'm more into God's word and I'm protected by the grace of God and the authority of Jesus' name. But uh, during that time, I was not as strong in, in my faith in God. So I was very susceptible to these energies and the things that were happening in the spiritual battle. So fast forward to the rest of that night, uh, Leon tells me that later on that evening, his girlfriend Melissa texted him and said, what are these emails that you are sending me? And who is, who is so-and-so? And she mentions a name, apparently of a girl that he was talking to at the time. And somebody was, had somehow hacked into Leon's email found a whole bunch of naked pictures that this female had sent Leon and then forwarded the, all those pictures to Melissa's email address and says, yo, look at what Leon's doing. And then Melissa also got text messages and a phone call with the woman's number who was sending the naked pictures, but it wasn't the woman. It was a voice saying, you need to check your email. You need to you need to talk to Leon. And so Melissa's really confused. Why is this going on? What's going on? Are you cheating on me? And Leon's like, no, I'm not cheating on you. Uh, this girl was sending me pictures and I wasn't talking to her like that. I didn't ask for these pictures. And what was strange is that Leon said that these pictures that she had sent him, she sent different pictures from different email accounts to him for whatever reason. So whoever hacked into his email had the audacity and the time and energy to find every single different email address and forward all the pictures into one email to Melissa's email address and find the phone number of that female and send it to Melissa's phone. So at this point in time, Leon is just his whole his whole life is starting to be affected by whatever's negative around him and affecting him. Since he had moved out of the apartment, he moved to a new apartment. And during that time, he had gone to that apartment. And at one day, he 
ran in to go to the office to grab some paperwork because he worked as a security guard. And when he came back out, somebody had jumped into his car and stole his car. And he had his laptop. He had, I think, like $2,000 cash. He had just got came back from the bank and they had broken into his car and stole his car. And he never saw that money back. And I think he had some issues with the insurance where he didn't get reimbursed. So a lot of negative things were happening in the Leon since he had moved away. And nothing ever, never, never really, uh, I never felt anything in that room since Leon left. And when I thought about it, I just kept thinking, like, maybe it was really when Leon called out the devil and said, I wish he would try to possess me. I wish he would try to come at me. And then it just seemed like everything was going downhill for Leon because even later on that year, he ended up going to jail for the first time on his birthday for apparently driving and some Middle Eastern men were driving crazy. They cut him off. And they were driving crazy and they both stopped at the stoplight and they got into an altercation. I'm not sure who pulled out a bat, but somehow a weapon got involved and Leon ended up using that weapon against them. They were trying to use it against him. And then he gets thrown in jail for assault and battery. So it was just it was just really crazy that all these things happened very quickly within a, a couple of months of that incident. And then to end everything off... Uh, to come to a close, I was still living with my aunt and Marcus in that apartment where everything happened. And my aunt had said one night she had gotten up to go to the bathroom. But when she got up from her bed, she saw a shadow figure standing in the corner just watching everybody in the room. She didn't know what it was, but it was it was in the room. It was a clearly a, a dark entity figure and my aunt's not really religious or spiritual she just she's an accountant and she just lives life how she how she does and she just said that she saw this figure in the room watching us and when she got up to go to the bathroom it just slowly dissipated away so those are the only two accounts that I have that confirmed that there was something that was trying to attach itself to me and that had attached its energy and affected Leon on a much deeper scale because I was basically, I guess, in the crossfire of his projection of challenging the devil on that day that we went to go see, ironically, a movie called The Devil. So I've had many other experiences that are separate from this one, but this one definitely takes the cake, and every time I tell a story, uh, I've moved on from it, but it's good to relate that the name of Jesus Christ does have power, but in that time and period when that happened to me, I was kind of angry at myself that I was paralyzed in fear because I gave it power by fearing it when I'm only supposed to fear God. And my mouth was basically mute. I was a mute. I couldn't say much besides we should do something, but I didn't do anything. I could have just said in Jesus Christ's name, you can leave me alone. You're not welcome here. I couldn't even do that. It definitely got to learn a lesson from that. And I did learn a lesson, but at the time it angered me because I was like, yo, why didn't I do? I knew what to do after it happened, but I didn't know what to do when it happened. I just kind of just got psyched out. So for a while, I kind of held a grudge against myself, but it couldn't be helped, you know, but now I'm more in the, in the knowledge of how to protect myself. So that's my story. Well, one of them, at least. Yo, what up? It's Rubble D. I love this beat, man. Yo, check it out. Shout out to Third Page. We about to merge lanes. No need for road rage. Flying about this bird cage. I'm on the verge, main stage of this platform. Lyrical attack storm, spiritually that form. 
create ruckus like rhinos colliding black horns. Can't be half sharp when I'm dividing these trap thorns. Break away these chains that enslave throughout my veins. Holding up these heavy weights, weighing me down. I'm an iron crane, cause life's a wave, complex and concave. Don't be swallowed by its mass as it crashes your way. Get on my wrath, yes, to help you through the pain and the wrath. And if we get thrown off the side, God will make us a path. You know, with me, you got another brother and friend. So I don't have to act it out like I need to pretend. We in the same situation and we all need to win. And I'ma build your spirit up all the way to the end. We're breaking waves and I'm balancing out my soul. I'm going out with the ties, they valuing about my flow. Cause my music serves a brighter, higher purpose than me. Listen, my inner soul is speaking love so positively. That's what it takes to change this world that is encompassing me. Locked in this beat, don't be so quick to show how pompous you be. Put into place a better self to help others increase the health by staying right by the side, no matter the hand they're dealt. Let's just cheer. Kick it back like the old days Still making new moves Not caught up inside our old ways Hop up on the NPC I got the wordplay Delivering some truth to our people As we emerge brains Drifting upward to a heavenly rise To know the skies Reveal itself within the world Realize without material guys Into ethereal minds And spread the love of all your spirits To those trapped and confined Cause life's a wave, complex and concave Don't be swallowed by its mass as it crashes your way Get on my wrath, just to help you through the pain and the wrath And if we get thrown off the side, God don't make us a path Cause with me, you got another brother and friend So I don't have to act it out like I need to pretend We in the same situation and we all need to win And I'ma build your spirit up all the way to the end Cause life's a wave, complex and concave Don't be swallowed by this mass as it crashes your way Get on my wrath, yes to help you through the pain and the wrath And if we get thrown off a side, God don't make us a path You know with me, you got another brother and friend So I don't have to act it out like I need to pretend We in the same situation and we all need to win And I'ma build your spirit up all the way to the end